pretty much inverted on the way back yeah. versus straight up and down versus having some pitch to it. And then has this huge move where the shaft shallows back out. Trying out something funky there, huh? Yeah, so we often hear about <laughs> shallowing the club in the downswing, but what we're really talking about is what creates the shallowing. And it's often what's preceded beforehand that creates, that creates this really nice shaft pitch that we're trying to get the club into. Mm. And a common pattern that you see with nearly every recreational golfer that struggles with their contact, mm -hmm. right? And also start line and curvature has got to be the opposite of what you just demonstrated there is we'll see a lot of players trying to manipulate this golf swing as they might feel like they need to try and come from the inside. So they actually whip this thing in, they actually get it too flat too early, right? Mm -hmm. And as they do so, well then it's gonna have the negative effect of then coming in too steep. And there's a variety of ways for this to happen, but essentially the shaft is coming down by this stage of the downswing like a lightning rod, rather than where you would see the professional, which is kind of set on about the angle of the ball as such. Yeah, and what, as you mentioned there, a student understands that the shaft's pitching a little more out this way than what they would like. And so they're often, they're fixed to that is to get the club moving in too far. But we know that there's only a certain amount that the club can get flat in the swing, whether that's the backswing or the downswing. And if it's mm. tipped this way, the reaction is it would go the other way when we apply some force on the downswing. As say a less of an exaggeration as I demonstrated there, because we do see on tour, someone like a Matt Wolf would be the most extreme example of a club that's pretty much inverted on the way back yeah. versus straight up and down versus having some pitch to it. And then has this huge move where the shaft shallows back out. Now, for most everyone, that's way too much, like a Furic model, mm -hmm. um, certainly a Wolf model. But the, the concept is really what we're going for with our students. You know, a softer approach is understanding that we want some pitch to the shaft here going back, which then is going to allow for things to naturally shallow out on the way down. I think natural is key, right? We're not trying to really manipulate this whatsoever. And as I refer to all the time in my lessons, if we remove the front bend element of the golf swing, and you'll get a lot of players that they'll go, okay, I need to swing more from the inside on the downswing. So they whip this thing around and they go, well, look, it's nice and shallow. But let's say you're going to play t-ball or baseball and you stood up, you would never position that bat in that position. Right? Exactly. Just because the bat is going to move into more of that orientation, you don't get that head pointing down to the ground very early, mm -hmm. which in a golf swing front bend might not look too bad. Absolutely. But you take that front bend out, doesn't look athletic. And that's why in baseball, you definitely see more of this steepening motion, right? Yep. And pertaining to this golf swing move, that's what you see with someone like Wolf or Fury. Correct. So we take the, the trail arm position, which, you know, I can move it in this direction where the palm's down. I could go to like a palm up position. And essentially to recreate this feel, we're looking to get the palm to work a little bit more down to the ground mm -hmm. as we go back, which puts this arm in a slightly, let's say, underloaded position as far as where the shaft would go. Mm -hmm. And as I move the club up into this area here, I'm actually thinking about sort of palm down to palm up. That can be a really good thought for someone that's a little bit inside with the club steepening. And this actually reverses the roll a little bit. So palm down to palm up. And I think it's great to train both sides. Yeah. So I'll often get the left hand involved, left arm involved where it's going this way. It's kind of knuckles down, going up. My elbow feels and my arm feels like it can't really go any further here. And ultimately I can start to go more this way. So getting the palm up, the golf ball to hit the ground there actually changes through my left arm mechanics, the difference in how the shaft would work. Yeah, and for that to happen as well, due to the fact that this is a weighted object, if your wrists are soft, right? You've got a secure hold, but soft arms, the weight of this golf club will naturally cause uh, a flat left wrist. It will cause this club shaft to shallow more than players who are trying to manipulate it too much because that is usually just going to lead to uh, wrist angle errors with the cupping and so on and so, so forth. If you were just super relaxed through the wrists and the arms, you'll find that a lot of those sort of impact positions that players are trying to force mm -hmm. due to if you've got a functional grip, the weight of the golf club, it will tend to match up quite nicely. Absolutely. So then we get into ways to practice this. And as I mentioned, I do like isolating the arms first 
and then we can get into maybe a little bit more specifics of what are we looking for. So if I even shorten the length of the club this way, so I've got the grip end facing my belt buckle and I went back, I could get a sense of the shaft pitching, let's just say around about where the tour stick is there in the ground, mm. somewhere between my feet line and the ball. And that kind of gives me a, a much softer representation of what I was demonstrating. And then as we move into the transition, as I complete the backswing, and as you mentioned, getting a little softer in the wrist, I can start to feel some of that change of direction in my forearms. I can start to feel the wrist soften, which also helps to load the club back. So we, we have a look going back here where I'm a little steeper, and then I've got the club pointing more towards the, or the grip end pointing more towards the golf ball coming down. So definitely a visible change of direction with the shaft. If you just set up to the ball there, and we'll just use this as a reference. I just want you to stop halfway back, just before your club hits. Yeah, perfect. Now, the player that we're talking about uh, here of who would get in this position does that pattern that Steve was demonstrating just then early in the backswing rather than in the transition in the downswing, right? And what we're almost encouraging players who do do that to feel is the opposite. Now, if Steve from here was to continue swinging to the top, it might look very unique, but intuitively, Steve is not going to swing down like that because he's going to snap every bone in his body. What are you going to do? You're going to try and manipulate it. Right. Work it back the other way. Yeah. And that, to be honest, it's going to be a subconscious reaction to the weight of the golf club, mm -hmm. right? Your body is going to respond in such a way where it feels so odd that nearly if every player at home, they started off and they said, I'm going to try and take this golf club as far outside my hands as possible and just tested to see what it looked like. Well, from here, if they swung down, they're not really going to miss the ground because it's so steep. Mm -hmm. You'll find that they'll naturally start to reposition in a pretty good orientation. Absolutely, and as we've spoken about in other videos, there's you know, really going to a, a maximum range here where it's super extreme, and then we have like variations which are softer than that. And often when we're teaching students, we will give them some extremes to work with and eventually like scale it back so it's something that they can practice with comfortably and ultimately take to the golf course. Okay, I love feedback and reference points, right? So players could film themselves from behind. They could possibly place an alignment stick back here where they really could see one. a track. What is, uh, what is something that you would recommend players do who film themselves so they've had a lesson mm -hmm. and you can see that the club's working a long way on inside. What could they do to, to rectify this? So one of the things I do every day and you pretty much just mentioned it, I'll take the player's club, I'll move it back about a club head behind and I will create the same angle here right more or less right on the ball. It's about a club length line. behind the ball there. Yep. Yep. Same and angle. Yeah. If I actually wanted to push them a little bit more on the steeper back, I'll just make that angle a little bit steeper, which mm -hmm. is fine. We'll, we'll look at that. And then what we're wanting them to see and feel as they go back is to start to get the club head to work outside of this. Now, and as Steve does that, and just note that his arms are not lifting away from his body to do that because you can see straight away the club head would move behind do that once more he is somewhat still aware of the chest is the engine for the backswing which then moves the club keeps his arms long but the club head is staying out right? exactly. he's not just trying to force it out by lifting his arms off his chest correct and the tip of the shaft here gives me a good reference i do see as golfers start to work on this if they've been biased to this side they can start to feel this and maybe late, they still have this little bit of roll. And so it really gives them a reference, as you mentioned, so they can start to practice and know, let's say, where the tolerance is for what would be on the right side of the spectrum versus this side. And ultimately, I wouldn't hit a ball doing this because the shaft's a little too close, but I would start to get them to make some sort of loopy movements. And you can even just watch the club head the whole way. And I know that that shaft is automatically steeper on the way back and I'm just creating that feeling on the way down, like soft wrists, allowing the club to kind of fall back behind me. Mm. Okay, so look, that gives the players at home a great representation, visual representation that they can use to build awareness of what it would be like to rectify this quick, snatchy inside takeaway that causes a lot of issues, getting more of a, a wolf-esque or a furic feel on the backswing by getting the shaft working from a steeper to a shallower orientation. Uh, why don't you do a couple more practice swings and hit one down there for us so we can see it in real time. So a way that you can transition into your practice, you have this fairly close. So obviously if you do touch it, you'll feel it, but you're not gonna break any clubs or yeah. you know, cause a racket. I've seen that happen before. 
And then I'd move <laughs> far enough away from this, so we'll call it about a club head or so where- So Steve I can't hit this, Could really. potentially touch it on the way back, but it's just more of an awareness thing. So I'm just aware of where that's going now, and I might even just follow it on the way back, and then come through, you know, creating that nice little shape. Not, not bad on the spot, mate. Not bad on well. the spot. So, uh, look, great, excellent drill. I love the fact that you were rehearsing it and you just moved the ball forward. So mm -hmm. you've still got that visual representation. Feedback is very, very important, guys. Excellent job. Good stuff. Great.